not good. Did, was it's that okay. good? Was that good for What you? do you guys think? Let us know who popped in better. <laughs> me, Deanna. I hope my hair me. had a movement to it. I don't think so. No. My hair definitely did. Well, I want to no, share with everyone there that um, he smells like milk and Wheaties. Why do I smell like milk and Wheaties? Let's show you Cue why. the video. <laughs> yeah, that's why he smells like milk and Wheaties. Yeah. It was worth it. It was a lot of fun. Hey, we're Trisha likes to have fun. If y'all guys want to make some TikToks for us, go for it, man. We'd love to see what yes, you got. Yes, and if burning ring of fire is in your head, then we're sorry. You're welcome. <laughs> And a big we got a couple. Welcome. What are we here for? We got a couple quick announcements for you guys. <laughs> uh, we won't drag us on too much. Yes, yes. First things first, Deanna. Yes, welcome. If you're brand yes. new, glad you're here. We have a challenge for you. It's a three point challenge, basically where you try us out three times. You pray. You listen to God. You yeah. ask God, "Is this where you want me to land as mm-hmm. my new church home?" And uh, we'd love the opportunity to pray with you through that journey. Just let us know on that connection card, and we would love to do it. Yes, and prayer. Hey, man, prayer is yes. huge for us. We truly, truly believe in the power of prayer. We have yeah. people asking for prayer all the time because they know that we care about this thing and that yes. we we really do think it's the most powerful thing we can do. So right. put down your prayer request. We would love to be praying for you and, yeah. and put that down on the connection card. Put that down in the comments, wherever you need. We're going to be praying for you. Absolutely. And we as a staff get to pray for you every single week. So we yes. would love for you to put those prayer requests yes. down. Yes. we got some exciting things coming up, though. Big things coming up. We have a worship night coming up. Woo-hoo. In September on the 25th. And uh, so more details on that coming. Yes. But just go ahead and mark it on your calendar. It'll be in the evening. It's going to be so much super fun. Super excited. It's been a hot Youth's minute. Youth's going to be involved. The youth. I'm super excited about that side yeah, of it. I mean, our worship team just knocks it out of the park. You guys get to see that every single week. Amen. And so think about maybe coming in person for this one. You know, maybe this is a good opportunity for you. It's going to be such a great night. Yeah. And we're just going to have fun together, getting to worship God. Yes. Um, and then also before that, yep. we've got our Super birthday, 17. Birthday. Uh-oh. 17. We're almost an adult. Yeah. Let's go. The points birthday on September 11th. We are going to be celebrating in-house and online. We're yes. going to have some really great things happening. So make sure you pop that on your calendar too. We got the we got the bounce houses. We oh got like goodness. some food. We, it's going to be so we're much gonna fun. We're going to have some cuppy cakes, you know, some yes. sweets. Because what birthday is complete without cake? None. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there's some pie sure people. Out, there's some pie people out there. Mm. <laughs> if you're a pie person, let us know. It's okay. okay. We love. We love you, you still. We but love you. You still. might be a little. <laughs> Cupcakes is about person. as far as I'm gonna go. Uh, <laughs> no, man. We were just oh, so excited. There's yeah, so many right. things we get to celebrate yep. as a church, and so we just want you to celebrate that with us. Yes. We're so happy you guys are here today. Great. Thanks for being here. Um, yes. Would you pray for us, Deanna? I would love to pray. I would love to pray. God, thank you for today. Thank you for this online platform. Thank you for everyone watching, God, and thank you for the message that. We're about to hear, Lord. Um, I know that we're we're ready to hear from you. We're we're ready to make a change. We're ready to lean into what you have for us today, God. Let us not leave here um, without being changed, without being renewed, without being excited about what you're doing in our life. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Hey, good morning. My name is Todd Mullins. Happy to have you here today. So I, I, I guess I'd say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So whenever or wherever you're watching this from, we are so happy to have you here with us today. And you know, just like Deanna and Noah said, we would encourage you to take that three-point challenge because finding a church home is an important step in your spiritual growth. And we don't want to be charged of it. We want God in charge of that. So just pray and listen and allow our greeters a chance to greet you. I mean, they're there to make you feel welcome and we are a church that believes in making people feel welcome because our, our mission is to help people find and follow Jesus. So, hey, my name is Todd Mullins. I've been on staff here for quite a while and just be a part of the teaching team. So it's just always fun to be here in front of the camera just to do this and just to share God's word on what we're doing. We are in a series called The Story of Jesus Part 2. Last year we did it through the book of John. And this year we're doing it through the book of Mark. We started early spring. We're going all through the summer and we'll finish in early fall. Uh, we are actually going to be in chapter 13 this week. We're going to, you know, we're doing it chapter by chapter. And, and it's just been so fun to get into what Mark's doing because he starts out, you know, in, in verse or in chapter one, he starts out with John the Baptist and he is going to go ahead and baptize Jesus. And then Jesus uh, goes ahead and finds his ragtag group of guys and he starts doing things. And a little recap, he eats with some sinners. He heals a paralytic. Uh, he does a parable of four soils. He multiplies miracles. Jesus elevates God's commands over tradition. We've got the fig tree that uh, Josh talked about a couple weeks ago. And then last week, it's really starting to elevate. You can feel the heat in what Mark's preaching because we know what happens at the end. 
but they don't know what's going on. But they know this thing is getting deeper and deeper into it. And, and Jesus, they're in Jerusalem. He's teaching in the temples. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they don't get it. They just don't understand. You know, sometimes I'm a lot like that. I just don't get it. I just don't understand. Well, these guys didn't get it. They didn't understand. They were forcing Jesus's hand. And he's like, man, there's going to be some warning signs. You guys need to know these. That's what Caleb talked about last week. And this week we get into verse or in chapter 13. And it's, it's amazing because this, there's so much red letter. If you got a red letter Bible and we're going to be reading out of this today. Normally I try to memorize verses and do those to not break eye contact, but I, I want to really get into the word and, and share this. We're going to be an NIV version uh, in, in the Bible. So if you got your phones or you got your own Bible, get in there to chapter 13, because we're going to go through this. And there's a lot of red letter. Jesus is speaking a lot in this chapter. So it's so important to understand that as this is Jesus actually speaking what's going to happen in 13. And it is just incredible. I've been studying this thing. I've been reading commentaries on it, just getting into it, because it is, it is so amazing to see when Jesus is speaking, how we should hear those words. And we're going to go ahead and get into that right now. So if you would open up uh, to verse thir or chapter 13, and it starts off like this. It says, as he was leaving the temple, that's Jesus, was leaving the temple with all his guys, and he had just been in there, and they went ahead and they were tempting him. They were challenging him, and he had left the temple after he dealt with those guys, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It says, as he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. This is the temple that they're talking about. And what's so incredible here is that was the center of Jewish life was the temple. They gave their offerings there. There were sacrifices there. That meant everything to them. Is there, is there something in your life that means everything to you? Because that's what Jesus is going to address right here. This is such a Jewish chapter because this meant so much to them. And sometimes we get lost in that because we think, ah, it's just for the Jews. It's not. This is for everyone because we all have those things that we focus on instead of Jesus. And the Jewish life, the Jewish way was to focus on the temple. And Jesus was right there. And they missed it. They missed the whole thing. So here he is. So they said, what look, teacher, what magnificent stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Do you see all these great buildings? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Every single one. Jesus is saying, look, everything you believe in is going to be gone. You know, the Jewish life, there was it was either it was optimism or pessimism. They were optimistic because they knew in the end that they were the chosen people that they thought they didn't have to do anything for it, that at the end, on the day that Jesus came back, the Lord came back, the day of the Lord, that they would get their place as the chosen ones. So they figured they didn't have to do anything. So it was optimism. Like, hey, we're going to get this. In the end, we'll go through whatever troubles that we have to. This is us. God's going to take care of us. But then there was pessimism because everything has to be just destroyed and recreated for it to be good. So if you're Jewish, you have this optimism or you have this pessimism. And that may be you today. So Jesus is saying, look, I'm going to take all these stones. I'm going to throw them down. Everything you cherish, everything you focus on is going to be gone. The other day I was doing a, uh, I was doing a wedding, uh, speaking of focusing, because sometimes when you, when you focus, you just lose everything. And I was doing a wedding, and at the bottom of the one page, it said in real big caps, in like 16, size 16, the rest of the thing was in size 11, in 16, it said, congregation, please be seated. I had to put that on my wedding thing as I'm doing the wedding because one time I focused so much on the bride and groom and their message and their vows that I forgot to tell the entire congregation to have a seat. 25 minutes, that entire congregation at church was standing the entire time. I felt horrible, but I was so focused on the one thing that I forgot something else. Is that you in your life? You're focusing so much on one thing that you get hurt. I was, uh, I was in high school, senior year, second play of the second quarter of the first game in my football career. So it's the last year's senior year. I'm, I'm looking at possibly going uh, to uh, Montana uh, to go ahead and be a punter and get on 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 uh, get a scholarship there. And I was an outside linebacker. And the play took off, and I saw the play developing, and I knew this running back was coming my way. And I was zoned in on this guy. I'm like, I'm going to get this guy. What I didn't do, because I was so focused on him, I didn't see that there was a guard that had pulled and came back and did a crackback block. My career was over. I was done. My knee was blown out. The rest of the year, I didn't play. I came back the last game of the year. 
all because I was so focused on one thing. And that's what these Jews are focused on, the one thing, the temple. But Jesus says, do you not see this great building? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. So as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John and Andrew asked him privately. They said, tell us, when will these things happen and what will be the signs that they are all about to be fulfilled? Great questions. Questions that we're going to look at today. There's three total because one of them, Jesus answers ahead of time because it's an implied question that they were going to ask, the disciples were going to ask. So he answers that as we go through the text. So we're going to go ahead and answer these three questions. The first one we're going to look at is the second one in the list. It says, what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? First question, what will be the signs? Well, he goes on to tell us in verse 8. He says, actually verse 6, 7, and 8. It says, many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of the wars and rumors of the wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be an earthquake in various places and famines. These are the beginnings of birth pains. I, I was curious. So when I was reading, I was like, wars. How many wars do we have going on? And I, I made a note there. There are 10 wars actually going on right now. There are eight military conflicts, and there are 64 countries involved in 576 militias right now going against one another. That's a lot of wars and rumors of wars. You see that Ukraine and Russia are going at it right now. So you see that going on in the world. And the earthquakes, there were over 16,000 earthquakes last year, ranging from 4.0 all the way up to 10. Uh, the other day, we were actually about three weeks ago, we were in El Salvador, and uh, we woke up in the morning and one of the ladies on the trip, Lila, uh, she goes, hey, did you guys feel the earthquake last night? And I, I said, no, I, I slept right through it. And then Deanna said, no. And Elizabeth's like, no. And so we looked it up and, and sure enough, there was an earthquake, a 4.0 that happened in the middle of the night. And Lila said, yeah, the, the pictures were rocking back and forth and no one woke up. She's like, am I going to die alone? No one's going to wake up. And I told her, I said, in, in 2019, I had experienced a 7.4 earthquake. So apparently it was just more like magic fingers on the bed for me. I was just asleep and just enjoying the earthquake. A little rocking kept me asleep. So that was nice. But there were 16,000 earthquakes last year. Famines. There were 41, 000, 41 million people in threat of being of starving to death uh, last year in 2021. That is more than the population of Canada. So we see these wars, we see these earthquakes, or feel these earthquakes, and we, we see the famine around the world. There are other things that are going on, and Jesus tells us that we will see these things, and these will be the beginning of birth pains. And there's nothing that we can do about it. Just like a woman, when she starts to have those first contractions, she knows what's coming. But those are the beginning signs. And he goes on to tell us in verse 12 and 13, he says, Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm in the end will be saved. He goes on to tell us in verse 21 and 22. He says, at that time, anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, there he is. Do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect, if that were possible. So he says, what is it? What are the signs? You're going to see earthquakes. You're going to see famines. You're going to see wars. You're going to see people coming in fake names and saying, hey, I'm Christ. You're going to see these things happen. It could be in false prophets right now that we could see uh, in possible false doctrine, false teachings. But Jesus says, you will. You will see this. This will happen. So you can just watch for those. The second question. So when will these things happen? It tells us in verse 32, it says, No one knows about the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Only the Father. Jesus doesn't even know when he's coming back. One day it's going to be God's going to say, Hey, son, you need to return. He's going to return. Now you're going to see some people over the years that, are, that have guest days, May 21st, March 21st. These days that they've calculated themselves and they say, I know this is the day, but it's not the day. No one knows the day or the time. We only know that he will return the way he left when he ascended on clouds. He will be coming back in clouds, on clouds. And it's just, you don't know when that day is. So we don't know. The third question. The third question is implied because we know what Jesus answered on the first two. So the third one, he says, we, we actually ask the question, what must we do? What must I do? What must you do? What must we do? And he tells us, Throughout the scripture, in verse 5, he says, watch out. In verse 9, 
He says, you must be on your guard. Verse 23, so be on your guard. Verse 31 through 33 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about the day or the time, not even the angels in heaven or the son, only the father. Be alert, be on guard, be alert, be on guard. He goes on to tell us in 30, 35, he says, therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back whether in the evening or in the midnight or in the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Look, end times are coming. Today is closer than it was yesterday, closer than it was 2,000 years ago. He said, this gen Jesus said back then, this generation will surely see it. And he's not talking about that generation because he hadn't even left the earth first time yet. He's talking about the generation when it comes back. That day is coming closer and closer every single day. You can know the signs. You can know what to do. But if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, there is no way to make it out of this thing alive. The only thing you have is eternity with Jesus when you ask him into your life. If you don't have that, you don't have that. You're going to be separated from God through eternity. And that's what we tell people when we go out evangelizing and we go to El Salvador, we talk to people. I talk to people. I actually spoke to somebody today at work. I was just like, man, do you know what this means? I mean, if you're, you're totally separated from God, you know, Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. And that death is not a physical death. That's not something that would happen right now. Because if that were the case, there'd be no one left. But what that is, it's a spiritual death, a complete separation from God for eternity. And that's not what you want. You're going to have so much heartache and, and hurt in that. But I encourage you to start a relationship with Jesus Christ. The day is coming, and we don't know when that day is. It could be now. It could be now. It could be now. You are to watch. You're to be alert. You're to be on guard. You will not know when Jesus comes back. So I, I implore, I ask you, I say, please, start a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's so easy. You just invite him in and say, look, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've, that I've caused so much pain to you because God can't be around sin. And, and I know, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me. I know that you conquered the grave, Jesus, for me. And I know that you created a way to the Father for me. Would you come into my life and be the Lord and leader? That's all you have to do. Just ask him. Admit you're a sinner. Ask him to come into your life. And he'll do that. And then you can just be on guard. And the way you can be on guard, the way you can be alert, the way you can be ready is to be in God's word. To know scripture. Get into it. Read through Mark with us as we go through this. Get on a daily reading plan in Proverbs, whatever day it is on the calendar. Read that proverb. I, I just ask, get into the word. Allow people to pray for you or allow people to pray with you. In fact, pray for people. And when you say, I'll pray for you, stop and pray right there. Who cares who's watching? If you're out at a meal, pray for your meal. Who cares who's watching? Because Jesus is watching. God is watching. That's all that matters. We don't know when he's coming back. Mark 13 says, Jesus is saying, I am coming back and there will be this. You will see the signs. The signs are here. The earthquakes, the famines, the wars. But he says, be alert, be on guard, be aware. I'm coming back. So I would ask you to start that relationship today. In fact, we're going to go ahead and close our eyes and bow our heads. There's nothing spiritual about that. It's just to close out the distractions. And as we do that, I'm going to lead us through a prayer. And those of you that are on the other side of this camera, I would ask that you start that relationship today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for giving us the encouragement, knowing that the, that the end times are coming, that today is closer than what it was yesterday. And Father, I know that there are so many out there that need to know your name. You, you tell us in this chapter that we are to spread the gospel, that we are to continue preaching and teaching. And Father, so right now I, I ask that those that want to start that relationship with you, we would just say, hey, I, God, I know I'm a sinner. And Jesus, I know you died on the cross. I know you conquered the grave for me. I know you created a way for me to get to the Father. And Jesus, I ask you now into my heart to be my Lord and leader in my life. And that's it. You, you just began a relationship and your eternity starts now. No matter what happens on this earth, no matter when it happens or how it happens, you will be with Jesus in eternity. You will be in heaven with the Father. So I thank you so much, God. Again, thank you for your word, your time. Father, how you pour into us, how you pursue us like we are just a young love. So we just thank you for that pursuit. And may we just pursue you and lean into you. And as we draw closer to you, you will draw closer to us. Father, again, thank you for this day. We love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' mighty, powerful, and effective name that we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Todd, thank you so, so much for sharing that. I really appreciate your teaching. Guys, let him know in the comment box that you also appreciate him, that we thank God for you, Todd Mullins. We love you so much. And thank you so much for hanging out with us today, especially if you're brand new. Thank you for just taking some time, checking us out for the first time. We'd love to connect with you, with you, blah, blah, with you. Go ahead, check out thepointchurch.net slash connect. It's really the best place to connect with us. Even if you have questions about your faith or you want to connect with a pastor this week, um, make sure you put that in the uh, little notes box on that connection card. Now, thank you in advance for all those folks who have still continue to partner with us financially. You guys are such a blessing. And if you want to jump on that boat as well, you can do it a few ways. Thepointchurch.net slash give is a great place to go to give electronically, or you can always use the text to give option at the number below uh, or at one of our in-person services at 9, 10, 15, and 11.30. Uh, giving is just on, out the door. And again, if you are new with us, this part is really just uh, an opportunity for the folks who have decided to partner with us through giving to give back. But we don't expect anything from you at all, new person. We're just really glad that you're here. In fact, everything that we do on this online platform is for you, for you to enjoy, for you to feel encouraged. And uh, we're just really, really happy that you're here. You being here is a gift to us. And we would not ask you to dinner and expect you to pay the bill. So um, also be sure to check out all of our platforms. We got the TikToks, we've got the, the Instagrams, we've got all the Facebook things. All of our content is always uh, available on demand as well. So if you ever wanna re-watch a sermon or share with a friend, you can do it on those platforms. I'll see you guys back here next time. 